Welcome back to WTOP's Beer of the Week. We are joined, as always, by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group. A food and wine sommelier of the year, the group includes uh, Columbia Firehouse in Old Town, also Vermilion in Old Town, and in the Del Rey neighborhood, you've got Evening Star Cafe and Planet Wine. If you want to go in and uh, pick up some bottles, Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you, too. What do we have on tap this week? So this week, uh, there's a you know a little brewery. We've we've done one other beer by by these guys mm -hmm. way back about a year ago actually I think. Ohio, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Akron, Ohio. It's a little brewery called Hop and Frog. Uh, it opened in 2006. Uh, Fred Carm is the um, brewmaster and founder here. Uh, he's been brewing since the the mid 90s. Uh, opened in his own place in. Uh, in 2006, and then it, more recently in 13, opened a tasting room with a really cool kind of um, food program as well. Uh, but it's a cool place because you know we get Hop and Frog here, and when it comes, it comes in a nice chunk. But then we don't see it for a while. Um, we only see bottles, 22 ounces, uh, and, and no draft as of yet. So it's a it's it's a it's really cool to find it. And right now there's Hop and Frog on the shelves, so go out and get it. And most importantly for me, there are Hop and Frog Imperial Stouts, which I think are, uh, he does a lot of things very well, but I love his Imperial Stouts, I always have, so. Uh, the one we're gonna taste right now is called Doris the Destroyer. Um, it's kind of the, the, the double version of Boris uh, the Crusher, which is more, the, the kind of most well-known Imperial Oatmeal Stout. This one's even bigger, hoppier, roastier, and stronger at 10.5%. Did we do Boris? We did Boris, didn't Barrel we? Barrel-aged Boris, yeah. Mm. This is just, Inviting. I mean, just straight ahead, imperial stout, no, no, you know, nuances beyond just the beautiful flavors. Uh, classic American imperial stout. Wow. You know, I don't drink a lot of imperial stouts, but if you found a refrigerator and there's nothing but this in it, you'd be plenty happy yeah. with that. It's good, it's not boozy, it's really relaxed. This obviously has a good maturation time in tank after fermentation, so it's not boozy at all. It's balanced, lots of um, great roasted character, but also hop character in there. You can taste that in the finish. Chocolate coffee, espresso, fig, slightly licorice-y. Um, just uh, really does it well. Love it. Well, I was in Ohio. My sister-in-law lives in Cincinnati. I was there about three weeks ago, and I was joking to someone. I said, well, you know, it, we should just forget spending all the money on the presidential election in all 50 states and just run it in Ohio. Yeah, right, exactly, they're going to yeah. decide it anyway. It so at the very least, since Ohio decides who's president, at least it's great to know they have great breweries. This, Great Lakes, the, the list goes on. The list goes on and on. Yeah, and that's, and that's the thing that's <laughs> crazy, too. It's like this place, I mean, especially since they opened their, um, like, tasting room tap room, they've got 24 beers on tap. Um, I think almost all are theirs. Um, you know, uh, a great seasonal menu, lots of charcuterie and cheese. Seems like a great place to visit, so not just great beers there. And so in some ways, again, it's kind of fun that we can only get um, some of the beers, only bottles, no draft, and get them when you can. Makes it all the more reason to go to Ohio to visit Akron and see this tasting room. And the other thing that I love about this brewery is that 2006 doesn't seem like a long time ago, although it's almost a decade ago now. Um, maybe, so maybe it does seem like a long time ago, but, uh, in that, a lot has happened in that time, obviously, for beer. If you look at their roster of what they make, their year-round beers that they make nonstop are, this is one of them. Boris is another. So they have, like, these big, huge Imperial Stouts, Imperial IPAs, Scotch Ales, you name it, coffee porters. These are their year-round. So they, I really do believe they've been they're kind of ahead of the curve, especially with their barrel agents and stuff, uh, and everybody else in some ways have caught up the stuff that Fred's been doing here uh, for, you know, a very long time. And they make some nice, uh, a nice, at least one nice IPA that I've had. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do a bunch of really nice IPAs as well. So. But yeah, it's funny you say the passage of time. Sometimes I'll, like, reach into this pocket, pull out a receipt from 2007. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's time to take dry this coach cleaner. to the dry cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> what would you pair this with? Um, you know, I think and this is just, to me, is a classic Imperial Stout that's well-rounded. So I'm going with classic Imperial Stout. Um... Uh, foods. This means meat, this means cheese, um, lamb burgers with uh, lots of feta, um, anything that has bacon. Uh, like thinking the other day, like macaroni and cheese, really thick, rich macaroni and cheese, and maybe has some pancetta thrown in. Um, 
ribeyes, duck, uh, lamb chops, uh, all those things, I think, cassoulet, you know, your basic imperial stout, uh, things that have chocolate, cheese, pasta, meat, the best things. Well, you know me, I tend to run home to the barn like a cow. Uh, steak a pav. Oh, it'd be with awesome. The, you know, the peppercorn and, oh, the, and yeah. the blue cheese on top. That'd Beautiful be good. thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. <laughs> All right, we're going to lunch now. Uh, Craig, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.